Hey guys, just a reminder to check out vpntierlist.com. It's a collection of all my ratings on the channel, and you're going to find lots of helpful information here on how to choose a VPN. Anyways, back to the video. Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be checking out private internet access. Uh, we're going to be doing a master guide explaining how to use all the features, some ticks, some tricks, and just show you how to take advantage of it to its full potential. All right, guys, so this is private internet access. You might be thinking, well, hey, this looks a little bit different than the one I've been using. Well, that's because private internet access allows you to customize the look and feel a little bit. Now, for me, I prefer when it's not stuck down, kind of down here in the sidebar, the old private internet access, I um, kind of would like to do that and I've never really liked it doing that. So if you go to dashboard appearance and switch from attached to trade a window, you can actually have it to be more of like a traditional windowed VPN appearance. Now guys, along with that, you also have other preferences you configure. Launch on system startup means that private internet access is going to launch up when your system reboots or when Windows starts up again. So if you always kind of want to be reminded to start a private internet access, that could be one good way to do it. Um, you can also have connect on launch feature. So this is one way to have private internet access always kind of connected. You launch on system startup and it will connect on launch. So as soon as your system starts up, you're going to be connected and this will kind of ensure that you're always using VPN. Desktop notifications, if something goes wrong or something like that, it will notify you. Language, of course, is pretty, oh God, is pretty self-explanatory. And we also have light and dark theme. I actually kind of like the dark theme. I actually think this looks quite similar to TorGuard VPN's kind of interface right now. But the light theme is kind of more the traditional old school private internet access theme. We also can configure the theme down there um, and the tray icon. So that's going to be, you know, if you want to go down here and kind of click on it like this and right click it. So I kind of prefer that classic look. In terms of the privacy features, guys, Private Internet Access has a kill switch. Now, you might not even know what a kill switch is. Basically, this is going to prevent any leaks from um, happening outside your VPN. So let's say that your VPN is off. There's not going to be any internet traffic. And when it is on, there is going to be internet traffic. So in a way, Private Internet Access's kill switch is what I would call, consider a network kill switch. Some VPNs like TorGuard VPN have application kill switches which is pretty cool. So let's say BitTorrent shuts down um, or let's say you shut down your VPN, BitTorrent is gonna shut down and you're not gonna be downloading torrents. I kind of prefer that kill switch, but this is pretty secure and a good way to do it too. Private Internet Access Mace is gonna be kind of the built-in ad and tracker and malware um, kind of feature here. You could go ahead and enable that if you wanna get rid of that stuff. It's probably pretty good to have as well as like, you know, the extensions and stuff if you wanna do that. Not too many VPNs have ad blocking. Um, some can do it kind of like through DNS and stuff like that, through DNS tricks. So I do like seeing this here though. And then in network preferences, we have some more settings to take advantage of. Um, the interesting thing here is you could use PIA DNS or PIA's Handshake kind of feature. Now Handshake is pretty involved, at least in terms of the technology implementation. Um, Private Internet Access has a big blog here kind of talking about it and stuff like that. Overall though, it's kind of like an even more secure DNS solution uh, than kind of like the PIA DNS. So if you want to use it, you can. However, I'm not sure it's completely necessary. Um, it says here the Handshake naming protocol uh, differs from its predecessors in that it has no concept of namespacing or subdomains at the consensus layer. Its purpose is to currently not replace all DNS, but to replace a root zone file on the root servers. So like I said, it's pretty technical, but it arguably thinks it, uh, Private Internet Access believes it is more secure. Another new feature Private Internet Access has implemented this year is going to be the app exclusion feature. And this is pretty much what I would consider split tunneling. And it even says that right there. Basically, this is going to mean um, you can have your VPN on and let's say you want your browser not to use the VPN or you want a specific game to not use a VPN or something like that. This can help you increase speeds or not use VPN specifically on certain applications think this could also be useful for people who want to keep their VPN active, maybe prevent their ISP from seeing what they're doing, but maybe you want to watch Netflix and stuff like that in the United States. And sometimes private internet access has problems like that. For me personally, I don't really have too many instances where I would use the app exclusion feature, uh, primarily maybe for gaming to have it active on my computer, but not for the gaming program. Um, let me know down in the comments down below if you could see any useful applications of this split tunneling feature. You pretty much just click app exclusion and then yes, and then you're going to add the application there. 
And lastly, we have connection preferences. We got a lot of things to configure right here. We have the connection type, UDP, TCP. UDP is probably gonna be more fast. Um, TCP is gonna be a little bit more reliable in terms of how it handles the information um, with your VPN. So depending on that, you go ahead and pick the one. I'm probably UDP is fine. Data encryption, um, it's gonna be from lowest to highest. 120S AES is still very secure and um, it's not gonna be very crackable, but 256 AES CBC is gonna probably be the most secure option here. Now, depending, you could test and see if AES-128 gives you better speeds than AES-256, but since most of the computers we have are pretty powerful now, there shouldn't be too much of a difference between choosing lower and data encryptions and stuff like this. Maybe um, on the specific use cases like VPN routers, it could benefit from using a lower encryption or maybe really old phones. In terms of the port, um, you could stick with default port. However, if you're having connection problems, maybe you're at work or at a school or somewhere where your VPN doesn't seem to be connecting, you could go ahead and play around with these ports a little bit and that sometimes that could be enough to get past um, VPN restrictions uh, that are based, uh, firewalls banned stuff based on ports. Data th authentication is similar to data encryption. Um, this is gonna be how things are authenticated. You could choose SHA-1 or 256. Um, like I said before with the data encryption, uh, both of these are probably gonna be pretty fine. SHA-256 is gonna be more secure though. Handshake is another one as well. Um, these are gonna be super, super secure and honestly probably a little bit overkill. However, this one is probably gonna be fine for most people to pick from, but if you wanna go more secure, of course, go down. Private internet access is also kind of unique in the sense that it offers a SOX proxy. So you could just type in your credentials. You can also do this on a BitTorrent applications and stuff like that. Not too many VPNs offer that ability. I know ExpressVPN specifically doesn't, which is kind of stupid because it is very expensive. Lastly, we have a couple smaller features here. So you could set to use smaller packets. This can result in lower transfer speeds, but improve reliability. So maybe if you have a really bad connection, you can use um, smaller packets. Um, it might give you slower speeds, but more reliability. Um, try alternate settings. If the connection type and remote port above do not work, try other settings automatically. So this is a pretty cool feature. Maybe just leave that enabled, try to connect a couple different times and private internet access will try to figure it out, you know, how to connect based on, you know, what is happening. So I think that's actually pretty neat as well. This stuff is just kind of behind the scenes. You can receive beta updates if you want to. Um, disable seller greater graphics. So this could reduce CPUs and graphical effects, although private internet access probably isn't taking too much. And this is just for logs and stuff like that. You can also reinstall network adapter, split tunnel filter, and uninstall private internet access here. Sometimes with the network adapter, sometimes you're gonna be encountering errors when connecting and stuff like that. So maybe reinstalling things can help you get connected. In terms of the main kind of interface here though, guys, um, it's gonna be pretty self-explanatory. You're gonna be able to choose your location here. You could just choose automatically and probably get the best speeds. You can also choose by latency. Um, you could favorite servers. Overall, I do like this uh, server organization and the search is quite good as well, letting you search for the server you want. Some VPNs don't offer that search feature at all. Um, you can also quick connect based on the countries here and you'll see your performance and you even have some um, quick settings here to configure as well. This is actually really cool and not really something I've seen too often before. Most VPNs make you go into the settings. Now the result is that this does feel a little bit cut lettered. There is a lot of information to take in and people might be a little intimidated by it, but I think it is quite good. And honestly, I think Private Internet Access's application right here is probably the best version they've ever had yet. We keep a lot of the old settings and security features. They've expanded on it and they've made the interface even more kind of advanced and capable in how you use it. Overall guys, this is the end of the Private Internet Access Master Guide. Let me know if you have any comments down below. It's just a short run through of all the things that I could find and show you how to use it. And thanks for checking out this video.